Oh, ah, piss narcissus. Guess who just filmed a 20 minute video and then he realised the microphone was off. It's me, it's Jimmy, it's this dickhead right here. So, Netflix's own Vikings colon Valhalla is coming out in February. So, because of this momentous occasion, a trailer has been put out. So let's take a look at the trailer on you, boy. Just the thumbnail looks bad. It looks bad, you guys. I am not optimistic about this, just from that. That looks kind of crappy. Uh, so let's see what we get. I, I am informed reliably by uh, Fake History Hunter over on Twitter. If you don't follow Fake History Hunter, go follow, uh, because you will learn a great deal uh, about how much made-up garbage there is out in the world. And I am reliably informed that the first second is pretty good, and then it goes downhill from there. <laughs> so let's see if this is true. Here we go. Uh, in case you're not sure what this is, uh, Vikings colon Valhalla is apparently set in the start of the 11th century. We start with a lovely bridge, which I presume is a bridge over the Thames. I I'm watching this on my phone. And if we're looking at a bridge over the Thames, that probably implies this uh, is related to the St. Bryce's Day Massacre of 1002. Ethelred, King Ethelred, uh, commands that all of the Danes be put to the sword uh, in certain parts of England, not just Viking raiders, but any Danes who have who have settled. So it's not just about Vikings, it's about uh, Danish people who have settled in England. And, um, oh, I've got an itchy nose today, I might sneeze a couple of times during this. <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, sorry. Ugh, horrible. Um, so yeah, Ethelred the Unready is uh, king of the English from uh, the 970s until 1013, uh, then 1014 to 1016. Um, and he actually loses his throne briefly because uh, of an invasion, a Danish invasion, uh, and he's actually forced to retake London, which is kind of cool. So let's just take a look and see what we have. So we've got... A cool looking bridge, actually. Uh, lots of good footings in that river. And what looks like the reinforced, rebuilt Roman wall. Late Roman wall on the Thames. <coughs> Originally the Romans didn't have a wall on the riverside in London, and then they rebuilt that. Uh, they built it to defend against Saxon raids, so that's cool. And that was then reinforced for years and years and years and years and years. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I think this is Edmund, uh, Edmund Ironside, later on. Uh, I think, I think, I think that this is Edmund, wearing what looks like a studded leather vest with a turtleneck over, like, chainmail... bits of chainmail? Strap-on pauldrons, shoulder plates, a pauldron is a shoulder plate. Um, leather van braces and what looks like a lovely silk doublet, which is quite impractical to wear under that, but there we go. Uh, he hears drums, and I see lots of men in cheap black chrome tanned leather. No helmets on any of the people in this initial shot of, I presume, Vikings. Uh, they definitely wore helmets. <coughs> Otherwise, what was the Germanbu helmet for? So, there we go. In fact, helmets are quite an important part of Germanic religion, as a colleague and friend of mine has argued in her PhD. Not great so far. The lady stood next to him is wearing just a full-on animal skin. Just a full-on, just animal skin rug with some clasps down it. Doesn't look very regal. Doesn't look very royal. Oh, let's take a look at this shot here. This shot here um, tells me everything I need to know about how this series is going to look, I think. In the foreground, we've got a guy wearing an unidentifiable type of garment. If you guys have any idea what this thing is supposed to be, please let me know in the comments. I haven't got a word for this. Uh, the shields have really nasty, fake metal-looking rims, just, just riveted onto them every few inches. Uh, they're not covered in skin or leather or rawhide, just... Bare wood, badly painted, badly maintained bare wood that looks like it's been spray painted. Uh, the guy next to him, uh, the guy with the ZZ Top beard, he is wearing 
what looks like some kind of German tile oven. That's not any kind of armour that existed, really, is it? Guys, let's just... Let's not even pretend we're trying to do history, shall we? All the Saxons have got helmets. And if you look at manuscripts like this, this is an 11th century Saxon manuscript. Everybody's wearing a helmet, pretty much. The buildings look kind of cool. Those are nice timbered buildings. I like the timber-built buildings, they're cute. Everyone's wearing a helmet except for Prince Edmund. That makes no sense, does it, guys? The most important bloke on the battlefield, bareheaded? I don't think so. Uh, they're all carrying the same weird shields, except for a few who are carrying what look like just metal round shields. These weird tall shields, like a mix between a Roman scutum and a kite shield and a heater shield and a Mycenaean tower shield. They're just, they're just fictional. They're just fictional with these weird applied crosses to them. Uh, and I'm seeing a lot of what looks like studded leather. Studded leather, great if you want an upgrade uh, on your D&D &D character for relatively few gold pieces. Not great if you're doing history. Oh, they've been brought to avenge the death of Vikings. Says it right there, death of Vikings. <laughs> They haven't. They've been called upon to uh, avenge the death of Danes. We literally just talked about the St. Bryce's Day Massacre, guys. It wasn't just Vikings. It was Danish settlers. They were settlers. They were just people. They were people. They were women and children. They weren't Vikings, were they? They were all kinds of people. They were, you know... We have got the bodies of several young men, about 35 young men from Oxford, who were murdered brutally... And we actually have some evidence that some of the burning of, of other buildings that is reported from the stories of the time actually went on during the St. Bryce's Day Massacre. But this this is going in the direction I think it is, isn't it? We've got towers on the bridge. That's fun. I'm not sure if that kind of wooden, flimsy-ass tower is particularly what you'd see on a bridge like that. That seems poorly designed. Bring me England. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Um... Okay, we're on the bridge, and we've got a single rank of men with their shields up. All painted the same design. Everybody else is just crowding in. Really not how you'd expect trained warriors to behave. Not great tactically to just have a single shield line in there. As soon as that charge reaches them, that's going to start crumbling. It, just through sheer weight of numbers, and especially with archers on the towers, which we have. This doesn't look good. Uh, let's just pause here. Edmund, again, riding just bareheaded, just riding into battle without a helmet on. Very bad idea. All of his men are wearing exactly the same cheap Spangenhelm. Probably paid about £45 each for those. I understand they've got a budget, but if you're Netflix, you've got a budget that's bigger than that. So that combined with, we were right, guys, it's just chrome-tanned black studded leather vests. They're stupid. You, you, you went to the effort of putting every single man here in a helmet. Not the best helmet, but a helmet. Which is great. That's what we want to see more of. People like me. People who care about history and how it's presented. Great. The little crappy diamond of studs. The, the rhinestone cowboy. Like, the leather gear. Why are these guys dressed in the cheapest leather gear? Like, I know leather daddies. They don't dress in gear as bad as this. No one dresses in gear as bad as this. Come on! Yeah, look at this. What is that? What is that meant to be? Is that meant to be sexy? Is that a kinky thing? Because that's a turn-off right there. Somebody turns up to your club wearing gear as nasty as that? Mm-mm. That's... That's cheap. And it looks cheap. Like, there's ways to do this without it looking cheap. Longboats, covered in leather, mm, I think, and a very badly fitted male shirt on the guy at the front here. Like, he's got the bat wings of mail underneath his sleeves. He needs to get those fitted uh, a little better. He needs to tailor those. Lots of men carrying shields, which is great. One of the big things that we don't see enough of is people on every side carrying shields. The idea that the Vikings went to battle completely bareheaded is an absolute um, fallacy. They did wear helmets. As I've said, otherwise, what was the German Boo helmet for? This woman here is done a real dirty because she has, as far as I can tell, quite an important character, but they put her in this stupid fantasy-looking costume. 
They give her a sword that actually appears here to be a decent looking sword, and they give her this lovely bow that's definitely not historical. <laughs> Yay. And then we're pulling down the bridge. And then the Vikings are pulling down the bridge, which is not what is meant to have happened. They've got this totally ass about face. In the story, and it is just a story, it's not attested to as historical fact, Ethelred takes London back by getting his men to take the roofs off local houses, not just leather skins, roofs off houses, putting them over his ships to defend them from arrow shot from the bridges over the Thames, ties ropes around the piers of the bridge, and then pulls the bridge down. That gets him London back from the Danes. This isn't the Vikings pulling the bridge down to randomly win the, whatever this battle is meant to be. Guy with mud on face? Don't know why he's doing that. This isn't Predator, is it? War paint? Don't think so. That's mud. Guy with blood on face, and he appears to just have a wolf skin. Don't come at me with the whole Ulf Hedenar berserkers wore wolf skins thing. There's no real evidence of that. It's just a sexy thing that people do to make themselves look cool. Screamy man with mud on face. And then, yeah, we've got the Anglo-Saxons in their biker boots falling off the bridge that's being pulled down. And then we have the dog whistle. Viking blood. There is no such thing as Viking DNA. I did a video about it. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as Viking DNA. Scandinavian DNA? Okay. Viking DNA? No. Absolutely not. Viking is an occupation, not a culture. Stop it. Stop doing this. Stop doing this. And that's it. And then we have... Only on Netflix. Only on Netflix, eh, guys? Oh. Incredibly bad. Um, I... Uh, I'm not angry, Vikings, colon Valhalla. I'm just disappointed. And I'm even more disappointed from what I've read from the production team and the directorial team, the writing team, that this is just going to be another Pagans versus Viking, uh, Pagans versus Christian storyline. That's lazy. The situation was much more complex than that. A lot of Danes were Christians. A lot of Denmark was Christianizing at this point. Uh, a lot of the Norse who settled in Britain and Ireland were converting to Christianity and introducing aspects of their culture into their new Christian religion. It's just disappointing that this simplistic idea is effectively very transparently being used just to cash in on Vikings. Super obvious. It, they're just cashing in. And they're going to make money out of it. And... The actors who are in it and the production team who are in it have hopefully been given really good wages because of all of this new budget that they've been given, but frankly, uh, it looks garbage. Uh, and you might disagree, and you're allowed to, but it does. And it looks really ahistorical. And they've messed up a cool story about a bridge being pulled down, just so that the Vikings can look cooler. Hey! Oh well, there we go! Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. And uh, as ever, until the next time, Tantra Nessa, who will I'm a troll? Bye for now. accurate. It me. <laughs> Grumpy old badly lit git because my camera's in the way and I'm half in shadow and I'm bad at videography. Join my Patreon. <laughs>